Jarrow, American stolen artifacts founders of America. He's irresponsible. Welcome back to another episode of Don't Make Me Watch That. This week, I want to try to see 1986 with Big Trouble in Little China. I'll do my best. Versus The Golden Child. Well, I'll do my best. Before we begin, I want to remind you that if you love comics and pop culture as much as I do, you'll subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to stay informed of upcoming videos. Please share this video as that will help me gain subscribers as well. I also want to remind you to check out my columns and reviews on two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusade. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent, Radioactive, Samurai, Platypie, and Carl Vincent, Vampire Hunter. The latter has been picked up by Cutthroat Comics. Check the links below for more details and the link to Dracula Rising, which is available on Amazon. Here's some great artwork from Raphael Lanohaus from the origin story, Foul Blood. Once again, available on Cutthroat Comics. See the links below. I also have a book which is a collection of my reviews and columns called Comics, Pop, Culture, and Politics. You can also find t-shirts and posters on Teespring. Again, check the links below for all Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter merchandise. And now... On with the show, this is it. Big Trouble in Little China is a 1986 American dark fantasy martial arts comedy film directed by John Carpenter. The film tells us the story of Jack Burton, who helps his friend Wang Chi rescue Wang's green-eyed fiancé from bandits in San Francisco's Chinatown. They go into the mysterious underworld beneath Chinatown, where they face an ancient sorcerer named David Lopan, who requires a woman with green eyes to marry him, to release him from a centuries-old curse. What's going on here? Is this some kind of... Magic. The darkest magic. The Golden Child is also a 1986 American yeah. fantasy comedy film directed by Michael Ritchie and starring Eddie Murphy as Chandler Jarrell who is informed that he is the Chosen One and is destined to save the Golden Child. This child is special, Mr. Giraud. His destiny is to save the world. And it's your destiny to seek some serious psychiatric help. The film was produced and distributed by Paramount Pictures and received a total gross of $80 million at the United States box office. I want to remind you that all our totals on box office are rounded off. But yet, the Golden Child is completely forgotten by most fans and filmgoers, while Big Trouble in Little China lives on as a cult favorite and endures through comic books and other memorabilia. Why did one hit it big while the other languished in box office hell? Hey, hey, hey! In my pocket, it's a whole thing of Tic Tacs. Take as many as you like, please. How are you gonna spring us? I have no idea. <laughs> Looking at an article from The Dissolve and Nathan Rabin. On February 15, 1987, The New York Times published an article by film critic Janet Maslin titled Comedies Without Laughs, Merit Cries of Protest, which focuses on the dispiriting phenomenon of the 1986 Eddie Murphy vehicle The Golden Child selling somewhere in the area of 12 million tickets, despite the film's appalling paucity of laughs on The Golden Child's audience. Maslin writes, it may be that not one of them has laughed while watching it, not even once. Before modifying her assertion just slightly to acknowledge, that audiences sit through the golden child in near total silence, and only occasionally does the film elicit any reaction. They watch in what can only be bewilderment as exotic locations, fake looking stunts and incomprehensible special effects parade wearily across the screen. They may chuckle at Mr. Murphy's very infrequent wisecracks. Some of the humorous material was reportedly added when the film was almost finished to give it a much needed boost. My dear sweet brother Noopsy! I can see you busy right now. Come back some other time. But none of the jokes is memorable, nor is anything else about the Golden Child, but that need not slow its momentum. It's already in orbit, and now it can stay there. Now, Maslin isn't saying she personally didn't find the Golden Child amusing. She's making a blanket generalization about how the entire viewing public processed the Golden Child. Pace is inherently a subjective, and few film genres are more subjective than comedy. Yet Maslin's phrasing suggests that, objectively speaking, the Golden Child simply is not funny. The film has paradoxically become infamous for its forgettability. It's the perfect example of a strange breed of film. Movies that seemingly no one remembers, but nevertheless gross small fortunes. Murphy played a role in The Golden Child that was originally intended for Mel Gibson. 
When Murphy took the part, the film was hastily converted from a relatively straight action-adventure epic to comedy, though the film shifted genres in pre-production without becoming funny in the process. The only scene in the film that betrays director Ritchie's satirical touch is a set piece at a cable talk show hosted by a touchy-feely host who peppers Chandler with inane questions until Chandler snaps and issues an angry plea for information about a missing girl. The scene has an agreeably warped SCTV sensitivity, but reveals the disconnect at the heart of the movie. Murphy clearly isn't engaged in what he's doing. He's not listening. He's just waiting to speak. He's limply heckling his own movie, maintaining an ironic distance that protects its star while sabotaging the film's meager prospects. Now, Big Trouble in Little China was directed by John Carpenter, whom Paramount unsuccessfully attempted to recruit The Golden Child. In 1986, The Golden Child didn't just win the box office battle against Big Trouble in Little China. It devastated the competition, grossing about 80 million domestically. Big Trouble in Little China's paltry 11 million. But history is the ultimate judge of the film's merit, and history has deemed Big Trouble in Little China the clear victor in the war for hearts and minds. We make one move. From Walter Goodman in the New York Times, if, as is not unlikely, you should lose track of what is going on in Big Trouble in Little China and think you have wandered into a festival of Raiders of the Lost Ark, romancing the stone Star Wars The Karate Kid flash 26%, audience score at 47%, while giving Big Trouble in Little China 77%, with the audience score a huge 82%. So why did Golden Child outperform the other at the box office? The answer can be found in the careers of Eddie Murphy and Kurt Russell. While Murphy was riding high off the successes of Trading Places, 48 Hours, and his biggest box office success, Beverly Hills Cop, which earned over $230 million at the box office, Kurt Russell was more of a cult favorite, with his biggest success up until that time being Escape from New York, earning $25 million at the box office. Impressive for an indie film, released in 1981, but pale compared to Murphy's box office. Most John Carpenter films after Halloween didn't do that great box office-wise, but have since become cult favorites, with The Thing, also starring Russell, barely eking out $19 million off of a $15 million budget but it is highly regarded today. So it was simply that Murphy was the bigger box office draw. But after 230 plus box office, the 80 million take from The Golden Child was considered a flaw for Murphy, whose career was about to enter an uneven phase after this film. He was still having big hits with the sequels to his most popular films, 48 Hours and uh, Beverly Hills Cop, and he had other hits like Coming to America, but movies like The Distinguished Gentleman and Vampire in Brooklyn fizzled. However, Russell's post-John Carpenter career would see an upsurge in box office money with hits like Tequila Sunrise, 106 million, Tango and Cash, 120 million, and his biggest claim to fame, Backdraft, at 152 million. Actors who appeared in both movies include James Hong, Victor Wong, and Peter Kwong. Fun from its opening scene to the final credits roll. So for me, it's I want to watch Big Trouble in Little China, but don't make me watch. The Golden Child. Stay informed of upcoming videos. Please share this video as that will help me gain subscribers as well. I also want to remind you to check out my columns and reviews on two sites, Comics for Sinners and Comic Crusaders. I also have my own franchises, Adolescent Radioactive Samurai Platypi and Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter. The latter has been picked up by Cutthroat Comics. Check the links below for more details and the link to Dracula Rising is also there, which is available on Amazon. Here's some great artwork from my main artist, Rodolfo Ezequiel, from Dracula Rising. I also have a book which is a collection of my reviews and columns called Comics, Pop Culture, and Politics. Also, you can find t-shirts and posters on Teespring. Again, check the links below for all Carl Vincent Vampire Hunter merchandise. Until next time, this is Kevin Gibbon saying, Live long and prosper. May the Force be with you. Keep reading comics and keep watching those pop culture icons. It's a pretty amazing planet we live on here. And a man would have to be some kind of fool to think we're all alone in this universe. I could destroy you just like that. Just like that. You're wonderful.